And even now I run, you pursue me Even now I fall, you help me out Even through the pain, you bring healing Even in the darkness, you are light Yeah When I've lost my way, you will guide me When I call for help Welcome to Springfield. My name's Luke. Today we are carrying on with our series looking at Jesus according to Jesus and Kathy is going to join us a bit later to look into the verse she has which is about Jesus being the shepherd and Jesus being the gate. Now in old Bible school times actually the shepherd and the gate were very similar things because the shepherd used to sit down quite a lot as the gate literally and what we're going to do to start off is see how well we know not our gates because that would be too easy but how we know our sheep so in the chat I'm wanting you to give me your answers and we're very simply going to start with the one-off extra special quiz sheep or goat <coughs> title there to, to start with so all we're going to do is we're going to flash up a picture of a sheep or a goat and the challenge is on the chat to say whether it's a goat or a sheep first one is that a goat or is that a sheep and the answer is, it's a goat, obviously, come on, seriously, if you thought that was a sheep, let's see if you can do better on the next one. The next one, is this a sheep or a goat? Chat with people who are near you. This is obviously a sheep, clearly a sheep, even with horns like that, that's a sheep. Next one, are you ready? Sheep or goat? What do you think? Little baby lamb having some milk. Could be a goat, but it is definitely a sheep. Check. Sheep or goat? What about these two? Any thoughts? <coughs> They're a goat. They're very hairy goats. But they are, in fact, definitely a goat. Okay. Sheep or goat? What's the thoughts? <coughs> That is a sheep. It's a special breed of sheep that we've started to use in this country. I don't know why I found that out online. So there is the one and only sheep or goat quiz. Now the Bible says, when it talks about Jesus being the shepherd, it says the shepherd knows his flock by name and his sheep know him. Really powerful thing to realise that God knows you, knows me by name, knows all about us. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to go and join David for some worship and we're going to worship this God who knows you by name. In fact, in the Bible it even says he knows the number of hairs on your head. Now, for some of you, that might be quite easy to count. For others of us, that's a lot of hairs to try and get around to counting. But God knows the numbers of hairs on your head. So let's worship this amazing God. Some strength for eyes. As we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Do not face you, won't 
joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness of death, in the shadows of sin, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Thank you, Lord. You are our strength. Even if we don't feel it, praising you in our, in our living rooms, wherever we are. Lord, help us to engage with you, to lift your name high, to glorify you. Thank you for that, David and Grace. It's so nice to worship together and remember just how great this God of ours is. I love the bit of Rend Collective as well. Always a, always a good throw in there. What we're going to do now, because we've worshipped together, it's only right that we craft together. Hopefully, those of you who got the email earlier have downloaded the sheet. If not, don't worry, uh, you should be able to find instructions on the link that will be posted in the chat now of where you can find the sheet. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to hand over to Alan, who's going to do a little craft for us all about the shepherds and the sheep. Over to you, Alan. Good morning and welcome to the craft section of our service. Later on, Kathy's going to be talking about Jesus saying that he is the good shepherd and that he is the gate. And I'd like Nigel, if he can, to put the image of a biblical sheepfold on the screen so that you can see the type of sheepfold that would have been in use when Jesus was walking the earth. And we're going to attempt this morning to model our own sheep pen. And I'm hoping that many of you will have downloaded from the email sent round in advance this sheet from which we're going to try and recreate a biblical sheepfold. So it's very easy. It's all been marked out for you. And the first thing we do is cut our paper into four strips, equal in size along the solid lines. It's a square sheet pen, so we've got four pieces. And you'll see lurking at the end of the paper, your shepherd. But we'll leave him there for a moment and turn our attention firstly to the pen. At the end of each side, there's a dotted line. We need to fold on all the dotted lines. And you need to have either a glue stick or some sticky tape ready to stick these together. What you need to do is get your glue stick or your sellotape and start to assemble your sheet pen. Obviously, the corners, hopefully, are going to give it some strength. So if you can get those stuck down nice and firmly, that will be a great help at getting this to stand up. I'm sure many of you are wondering why Old Man Brearley has been given the task of doing the craft this morning. I certainly have. And Kathy tells me that the reason I was chosen is that it was felt that if I did it, people would think, well, it must be simple and that they could have a go themselves. So when you've got your four sides stuck together like that, you'll notice that we have a gate nicely cut, uh, marked for you. You need to cut out that gate like so, because... In the biblical illustration, our friendly shepherd here actually makes himself into the gate for the pen. So he needs to be cut out very carefully, as you can see. If you want to colour him in as well, please do. Any colour you like, as long as it's not red and white. There we go. You'll also notice 
when you're cutting your shepherd out that he's also got a dotted line across his middle. It's not a belt. Oh, it's actually where you're going to fold him because we fold him across the middle and then our friendly shepherd then sits across the gate to the sheep pen, which means that he can look after and watch over our little sheep. There'll be more about the sheep pen later. Enjoy making your sheep fold at home. Thanks for that, Alan. Really good craft to have. I really like the idea of the shepherd sitting in the gap in the sheep's pen. It's part of the reason we're doing the gate and the shepherd together, because actually ancient time, that is what the shepherd was. He was the literal gate for his sheep to protect them. So what we're going to do is we're now going to go and look at the passage itself. I'm going to hand over to Mike before I do. And don't worry if you're still colouring in and cutting out, that's fine. You can carry on just as long as you keep your ear out and you listen as the service goes along. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray and then we're going to hand over to Mike and then go straight over to Caffrey for the preach. So let's pray. Jesus, I thank you uh, for what you have in store for us today. I pray that as we listen to your word and as we listen to what you've laid on Caffrey's heart, that you'll really speak to each and every one of us. Uh, you'll bless Kathy as she gives the talk, Lord, and really just anoint her words and help us as people who are joining and listening, help us really hear from you and go home with something really powerful to chew over. And yeah, I thank you, God, that you're here with us now, no matter where we are, no matter how far apart we are from each other. I thank you that you are in our midst. So thank you for that. Amen. Over to you, Mike, and then over to you, Kathy. <laughs> Today's reading is taken from John chapter 10, verses 1 to 14. I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognise a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever come before me were thieves and robbers but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate, whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is hired, a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my she sheep know me. This is the word of the Lord. Well, good morning, everybody. And today we're continuing with our series of Jesus According to Jesus. And we're growing in our understanding of his work in our lives by looking at the I am statements of Jesus. And today we come to two linked images. I am the gate and I am the good shepherd. And the two are woven together in pastoral imagery, which would have been very easily understood at the time, but is perhaps a little bit more difficult for us at a distance today. And it's an imagery that is based on the notion that the good shepherd is going to lead his shape to places of good pasture. That's where he's guiding them to, that's where he's taking them. This morning, we're going to look a little bit more at that imagery 
Um, and then we're going to look at the context with which, in which Jesus was, uh, made these statements, because that will help us to understand the points he was making. And then we're going to think a little bit about how we apply this to our lives today. So firstly, we've got this imagery of a sheepfold. Well, we were making uh, sheepfolds earlier today. And just look again uh, at the picture or maybe the sheepfold that you made yourselves um, to remind ourselves that in ancient Jewish times, uh, very often it was a shepherd uh, who would sleep across the entry to the sheepfold. He was the gate uh, to the sheepfold and he would only let sheep into the sheepfold who were his sheep. So we have this idea of the gate coming in and they come into a place of protection. The sheep also recognise the shepherd's voice. So the sheep were able to recognise the shepherd as he led them out to pasture. And that again is within the imagery that we have this morning. We have to go back to the previous chapter to see the context uh, for the points that Jesus was making here. Jesus had relatively recently healed a blind man and the Pharisees were very critical about this and they asked the newly healed man about what had happened. Well, for this person it was obvious. The miracle showed that Jesus must have come from God. How else could this huge, wonderful transformation have happened in his life? But for saying that, he was thrown out of the synagogue. Now, Jesus discovers what's happened and he uses that as a, a place to start teaching about spiritual blindness. For Jesus, the Pharisees were unable to see what had happened. They were blind. And Jesus then chose to use the imagery of sheep and shepherds to show how shepherds look after their sheep and want the best for them. And it is a big contrast to what the Pharisees were doing because they didn't appear to be wanting the best for people. And this teaching culminates uh, in the points Jesus makes in verse 10 of our reading. And Jesus said, the thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and they may have it to the full. And Jesus uses two powerful I am statements to describe how he guides his flock into full and abundant lives. So when Jesus said, I am the gate, he was making the point that there's only one way into the sheepfold. And likewise, spiritually, we have to come to Jesus. And it's only through Jesus that we can have a relationship with God. It's only through Jesus that we can experience those blessings. We can try other ways and we all do at times, but they won't work. The starting point for our relationship with God is Jesus. We have to come in confession and repentance and acknowledge the sacrifice for our sins that Jesus made if we're going to get to know God. And while that's the starting point, there's more on offer. And when Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, he was promising more. He was gone promising ongoing guidance about how to live. And that comes from that idea of, of Jesus the Good Shepherd taking his flock out to good pasture. We have to learn to listen and to recognise our shepherd's voice. And when we do, he will lead us into the safety of the fold and protect us when we leave that fold. And leave the safe place we must if we're to find good pasture. It's an amazing promise that God will guide us into lives of fullness and abundance. But how? How does he do this? Well, I'm not sure about you, but for me, the recent months have not exactly felt like a period of abundance. And yet, at the same time as I bemoan the restrictions, I think I've got used to the safety of uh, living uh, within my own home most of the time. 
And if I see a large crowd of people on television, it feels wrong, it feels almost a bit panicky. Uh, and equally, I don't like going into a crowded part, a shop, and it's probably not really even crowded, uh, or a busy park. It feels very strange. It feels a little bit threatening. And I often find it easier to think about what I miss than what's been achieved and what has happened. You know, just having our services this morning, being able to make Zoom contact with family and friends, being able to carry on working, shopping. There's so much choice in our shops, so many different types of food that we can still enjoy. And then television provides uh, plenty of entertainment. And of course, the the, the uh, progress with the science is, is nothing short of miraculous uh, with the understanding of the virus, being able to identify the mutations uh, and, and the vaccine, the development of the vaccines. Uh, it is quite incredible. But at the same time, this is a period of time when much isn't possible. And when lots of things aren't possible, it does throw into sharp relief the question of what is an abundant life like? There's always going to be those with more or less than us, uh, but the type of abundance that Jesus has on offer is not shown in the summary of our things and of our activities. Spiritually, Jesus is offering us fullness of life that applies at all times. It implies in these difficult days of the coronavirus, we should be able to experience abundance. And the abundance on offer comes from principles that guide us uh, in whatever we're doing and in whatever way we're being asked to contribute uh, as individuals. Uh, and in case you're not sure at the moment, what we're being asked to do is stay at home. The absence of so much that distracts does, however, allow us to think about what our lives are really based upon. Uh, and when I was listening to the COVID, uh, sorry, to the Lectio, not COVID, the Lectio app recently, uh, somebody was talking about whether we see our lives as being based on the knowledge that we're deeply held and loved by the most powerful person in the universe. Well, that really struck a chord with me because what they were talking about was letting that be your perspective on all the things that go on in your life. So just let that statement wash over you. I am deeply held and loved by the most powerful person in the universe. I think when we have that perspective, it does change how we view things. We need to learn to, to recognise this and to recognise God's voice in our daily living. Recognising that when we follow his voice, he's leading us to good pasture. Well, we learn so much through prayer and through Bible study. They're real bedrocks of all that happens. But we have to be able to apply what is being said in our day-to-day -day lives. And in the reading, Jesus talked about thieves who steal and destroy and contrasts it with the good pasture of the shepherd, of the good shepherd. Uh, and I want to think about how we apply that teaching through the lens of things that steal life from us uh, and things that enhance life within us. There's not time to cover everything. I'm just going to scratch the surface really now with a few examples. And I'd really encourage you uh, to think about this afterwards. Think about more examples of things that steal life from us and things that enhance our lives. Well, the foundation for this is believing God's promises and following his examples when we counter challenges. For example, when we've been wronged, do we respond with an attitude of forgiveness or an attitude of revenge? Do we count our blessings and be grateful or do we focus on what we don't have? One response steals life the other enhances life. There's lots of attitudes, of, uh, examples of attitudes that steal life from, from, from us. For example, things like criticism, bitterness, and, and I could go on. Other attitudes enhance life. So, for example, we're told to love our neighbour as ourselves. 
Well, that includes having a concern for others, a heart for the poor, supporting social justice, recognising that there are barriers that cause disadvantage and looking for ways to dismantle those barriers. And as we put this type of approach into practice, our lives are enriched. I want to close by going back to the sheepfold and asking some questions. Do we go through Jesus, the gate, to get into the sheepfold, to the place of blessing? Are there times when we try to find other ways of getting to the place of blessing? Jesus, the Good Shepherd, leads us out of the sheepfold. As lockdown lifts, there's a sense in which we're all being led out of the sheepfold. What is God whispering to you as we start to be able to live more normal lives? And where is he taking you in the days ahead? And finally, where do we need to have the scales of spiritual blindness lifted so that we can more easily see the things and attitudes that steal life from us? And what do we need to do to start what do we need to start doing that will build up our experience of a life lived to the full? I'd encourage you to ponder those things and let Jesus speak to you. Amen. Thank you for that, Kathy. Some very challenging thoughts there. As we get ready to go into our next block of worship, I really want you to think about uh, the questions that Kathy said there. They're going to come up along the bottom of the screen again and let's just ask God where are we heading where is God taking us what do we need to let go of what scales need to be lifted off our eyes what do we need to start doing to to step into that pen to step into those blessings that God has planned for us as you sit and think about these as the worship begins as a family pray together, as, uh, as a household, whoever's in your house, just pray together. Be honest and real with your prayers with God. The great thing about God is we don't have to say a specific prayer. We don't have to speak in a specific way. He just wants us to speak to him, to chat to him, to be honest with him. So as John leads us in worship, take this time to just really ask God, seek God and see. Like Kathy said, what are the things that we need to change, need to do, need to let go of? I thank you, God, that you are here talking to us now. I thank you, God, that you want to uh, invite us in to your pen. You want to open the gate, as it were, step aside and, and bring us in. Help us stop trying to get in for our own merit, for our own skills. But instead, let us uh, just trust you, step with you and follow you. As the worship begins, Lord, help us hear you. In Jesus' name, amen. While the worship's happening as well, uh, there will be in the chat the words that were given earlier this morning. Again, if you need prayer for anything or if anything stands out to you, please let us know in the chat. As we continue, I just want to encourage you. It might be that you just need to sit wherever you are, but let me encourage you to make it be, just take a different posture than you might be if you were just watching something to just allow your body to encourage you to, to engage your heart as we seek God, declare how great he is, how great are you, Lord, the giver of life. Your breath in a 
in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, you only. So great are you. You give life. Hallelujah 
in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. Sing out. And I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. of me and I raise a hallelujah oh Lord I will watch the darkness flee oh Jesus I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery sing out I raise a hallelujah your hold on me we believe oh I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm louder and loud you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise and death is defeat the king is alive sing that we believe we believe that you are alive lord jesus you are right here with us and we cry out to you and we sing a little louder we sing to you sing a little louder raise our voice so we sing a little louder Sing a little louder We sing a little louder In the presence of my enemies Sing a little louder Louder than the unbelief Sing a little louder My weapon is a melody Sing a little louder Oh, heaven comes to fight for me Sing a little louder In the presence of Right here Sing a little louder Oh, louder than the unbelief Sing a little louder My weapon is a melody Sing a little louder Heaven comes to fight for me oh. And I'm gonna sing In the middle of storm louder and loud you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeat the king is alive oh I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm and louder and loud you're gonna hear my praises My weapon is 
as a melody. Sing, sing, sing to you. Oh, heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the King is alive. Is alive. The King is alive. Thanks for that, everyone. It's great to see loads of faces, even more now worshipping together. I'm looking forward to seeing where we take this next time. What we're going to do now is it's that time. It's time for notices. I need some whoops whoops and I'm going to hand over to a very special news team today. Over to you guys. guys for that brilliant news team today uh, what we're gonna do now is all that's left is for me to say thank you so much for joining us if you are needing prayer if something has really hit home please put it in the chat we have teams ready to pray with you pray for you you just need to put your name in and we will pray uh, likewise if you want in anything please get in touch with the church uh, link in the description and we can chat to you more there have a great week uh, hopefully you've enjoyed doing all the different crafts, have been challenged by what God's got to say and have enjoyed the worship. And we look forward to seeing you on Wednesday if you're joining us for the Bible readings, uh, Bible course, uh, morning prayer, Monday evening prayer, all sorts of things like that. If you're not sure about any of it, log on to our website, it's all on there. So whatever you're going to do this afternoon, I'm just going to say a quick prayer and then we will head off. Jesus, I thank you for today. I thank you for being here with us, connecting with us. I pray God that you will have laid on our hearts something that you really uh, just want to change in our lives, challenge in our lives or encourage us with. Help everyone here go home with something meaty to chew on, with something uh, encouraging, with something uplifting. And as we prepare for the changes that are going to be happening over the next few weeks and next few months, help the one thing that is steady in our lives be our conversation, our reading and our time with you. Let that be an amazing constant that will just bring joy, clarity and peace to our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. Have a great day and we'll see you all soon. God bless.
Freedom I have been set